Terry, welcome. Just waiting on the chief of police. He's supposed to come out and talk to me. He's in a meeting currently. Um, so I just went live just to make sure they stay kosher and everything stays on the up and up. Terry Sloan, huh? I'm gonna check you out. Rich Funk. Welcome, welcome everyone. I'll try to stay on task and stay focused here. Just got some questions and some, uh, yeah, I'm not, uh, I'm not gonna go live with uh, other people because I'm waiting on the chief of police to come out and I got a few questions for him. Y'all might've seen my, uh, my post um, about my friend Colin and I'd like to ask about that. Um, I'd like to also point out some other things. Um, he's in a meeting right now, but the chief of police is supposed to be coming out. And uh, so hopefully we can get some answers, get some, uh, uh, have, I mean, he told me already that he would, uh, he would uh, be honest. And if he can't say anything, he would say why he can't say anything. So I'll wait and uh, give him every opportunity. Yeah. Please and thank you. Yes, sir. You're all right, man. trust and we don't have a government for the people by the people and so we need to build that trust back and the way we do that's by being transparent getting in front of the people telling people how who we are what we are and what we stand for and then showing it through our actions because words are just words characters showed through action i'm trying to keep my character <laughs> hey man it's hard you got to live in your integrity and and do what's right for you because nobody else is going to do what's right for, for you. They're following their own light. They're following their own path. So that's how I, I mean, that's my feelings. That's my emotions on it. So hopefully the chief will be out here soon and he can answer a few questions for me. But, hey, man, good luck. Wish you the best. We're just waiting on the chief of police to come out. He said he will meet with me. I've called and left several messages, so uh, give everybody the opportunity to uh, show who they are and how they uh, how they want to be. Um, I ain't gonna I ain't gonna claim nobody's character until I uh, give them the opportunity to show it. So here I am. I'm waiting for the uh, chief of police to come out so I can talk to him, so I can uh, discuss with him the uh, things that uh, my friend called and told me about the police officer saying he was wanted to uh, plant a gun on me and shoot me. And how another guy was talking about how they could cover it up and they used to be able to do that, but now there's cameras and so it's hard to do. Um, just trying to expose people for the character they show. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, and ask about that bulletin. You guys should know I'm gonna ask about that. I've said it a lot. It's on my Facebook, it's on my uh, TikTok, it's on my uh, YouTube, it's on everything. I'm gonna ask about that bulletin too. Hopefully they uh, answer these questions. But it's hard telling what they'll do. So I figured I better go live just in case they try to get crazy here. I am recording so that I can post it on uh, later as well. I know I can post it with uh, my live, but I'm, I think it's easier to... Oh, we're going to talk to the chief of police in Joplin, Missouri, uh, about an officer who uh, was at an establishment. And one of my friends overheard him talking to his friend. Um, his friend said he'd like to punch me in the face. He said, that's not a good idea because he's always recording. Uh, it's not a good idea when somebody's recording. But then later he went on to say how he'd like to plant a gun on me and shoot me. Um, not very, uh, I guess not very professional from a police officer for someone to talk like that. Then he went on to talk about... Uh, they don't know how I get my money. They don't know how I have nice things. They don't know how I do all this stuff. And they're trying to pursue trafficking charges on me, which would take me to the bulletin that they won't release. So it's all a, it's all a big uh, conspiracy made up by the Joplin police. And so I'm here to expose it. Uh, yeah, that's the chief, the one guy in the pen video. That's Chief Pearson. Uh, I believe you can go and I got the whole thing on uh, YouTube. If you go to my YouTube channel. Oh, dude, my camera's got 13 hours. They're going to have to wait a while, man. <laughs> so I'm here. I'm ready. He said he's going to meet with me. So. I'm here. I'm, I'm waiting. And I don't, I don't feel like Chief Pearson. I mean, I shook the hand with the man. I looked him in the eyes. Um, I don't feel like he's going to lie to me. If he can't say something, he'll tell me why. Uh, it's not the chief of police. Um, he's new. He just came in last week. Um, it's, uh, it's the conduct of the uh, police underneath him. It's, it's, it's leftovers from he inherited these problems. He, he's trying to fix them. He wants to build community. He wants to educate. He wants to do those things that I speak of. So I want to give him the opportunity, and I want to give him the opportunity to say it in front of everyone, as I've already done. Um, so that's what I'm about. I'm about uh, the character of a man, not, uh, not making things up, not doing any of that. Just show me your character so I know who I'm dealing with. This old boy over here, his son got arrested. And sounds like they're gonna hold him for 24 hours for questioning. I don't know. He said it was some pretty serious stuff, but I, uh, he didn't divulge a whole bunch. I gave him my information so I could talk to him later. No, this is the police station. I guess it is kind of a court building, the city court, but we uh, trying to uh, trying to uh, I guess stop the uh, uh, illegal activity within the hey that's Kaylee she's the one that talked to me yesterday told me the cops wouldn't do that I think I, I think I might have that recorded I didn't uh, I didn't talk to her in person I called in to uh, speak to the chief or to speak to somebody about the officer. Uh, 
saying he wanted to plant a gun on me and shoot me. When he was talking to another person at, uh, at an establishment here in town and my friend overheard him. Uh, it's, uh, I'm waiting to talk to the chief of police here in Joplin, Missouri, because uh, officer uh, a few days ago or last week uh, was in an establishment and talking to another fellow, and he was saying how, uh, how he'd like to plant a gun on me so that he could shoot me. Um, and the other guy was like, well, I'm sure that you're... Uh, supervisor or whoever could make things uh could sweep things under the rug and he was worried because i always carry a camera um just an unprofessionalism within the forces and uh, these people have to be alleviated they have to go away um, if we want transparency and we want uh, the truth and we want uh, people to do what's right then the people leading us got to do what's right Then he went on to say, uh, they don't know how I get my money. They don't know how I have nice things. They don't know all this stuff. And then they, uh, so they're pursuing me for trafficking charges is what he was trying to say. And uh, I mean, y'all see what I do. I'm hanging out, doing whatever every day, living my dream. And uh, they just don't like it. Sir, did they have an arrest warrant for your son? They did not, but I did not. Did they go in your house to get him out? No, we came out to talk to them. I mean, we came out to talk to him and went from, hey, we're talking to, hey, let's get it. Yeah. I, I tried to remind you guys what to do. There's a lot more shit going on right now. Yeah. Just is. Stay. I'm not. How could I be happy about it? Lesson to everyone. If the cops show up at your house, don't go outside. Do not go outside. They have to make the decision to break the barrier, and they have to have a warrant or an arrest warrant. They have to have something of some kind or some probable cause to break that barrier. You save yourself by not saying anything, by not making a statement, by staying in your home. chief of police to come out to talk to us about a local officer who's uh, going around town talking uh, 
I should try to get the bulletin that originally started it, which was probably by the same officer that was saying he wants to plant a gun on me and shoot me. So I'm trying to get this taken care of so that uh, we can have accountable police and an accountable police force. That's uh, if you want an accountable community, it's you got to have accountable police. When the police aren't following any rules, any policies, any laws, they're they're not showing anyone else how to do that. They're not leading by example, and great leaders lead by example. That's a forklift, he's a little bit hard to hear him. Da, 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 da. And a spiritual guy, da, 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 da. and he didn't hear him. The next second, they're trying to man him. You know what I'm saying? And he has, he has bad health problems, and he shouldn't be man him like that. He don't bite you. Nobody should be. They had said he could have gone off of that. That would be it, because old dad loves his kid. And luckily for all of us, dad had no sense to hold recourse. This is just a. Uh... Uh, a side thing going on. I talked to the guy out front. Sounds like they got a 24-hour hold on his uh, son. Took his uh, son's kid away because of some, uh, I don't know, lady, uh, some lady issues. So I ain't saying he's right. I ain't saying he's wrong. Um, I don't know the case, but um, I guess we'll find out. I agree with you, Smokehouse Steve. Every police force has mostly good officers. When good officers stand by and let bad officers um, assort their, or assert their authority and uh, do things that aren't uh, legal and don't follow the legal process, don't follow policies, don't follow anything, that's when everything falls apart. Uh, I told the ladies up front I need to speak to the chief, and uh, they uh, they said that I couldn't. Then uh, I went outside and I talked to this man, and he told me to. Uh, all right, there's assistant chief uh, Lewis waving me in. I'll grab my camera. I'd like to make sure that we're all safe for your safety and mine. Rich. It is me. How you doing? I'm all right, buddy. How you doing? I'm doing well. Good to see you good again. To see you again. I appreciate you coming into Joplin and uh, being here uh, and taking taking me in to talk. Yeah, um, I told you, I, I've talked to anybody uh, and everybody. I, I never have a problem with that. Uh, but it looks like we may have an issue here. Okay. And I think the, the your concern, if I'm not mistaken, was that... Um, you say there was a safety bulletin that was put out on you by Joplin Police that... There was a bulletin put out by Joplin uh, Police Department, or I believe it was Joplin, because I've talked to uh, the troopers, and they haven't seen it. Mm -hmm. I've talked to Webb City, and they haven't seen it. So I'm not sure who put it out, but I know that Joplin Police Department had a bulletin out on me where they called me a sovereign citizen. Um, they've... Uh, I guess, made a lot of accusations about me. And um, I guess uh, I, I want a copy of it. I want to show the people what, what's happening, what's truly happening on the force. Um, and then I got called yesterday. If you need to take that, I'm fine. Yeah, no, I'm good. 
Uh, then I got called yesterday by a friend who overheard uh, Captain Duncan, who he didn't know who it was at the time, but then he went and watched the video, and uh, he seen uh, Captain Duncan, uh, or heard Captain Duncan talking to another guy at an establishment, and uh, the guy said something about punching me in the face, and he said, no, that's not a good idea, um, especially for a guy that's always recording. And then went on to say things about uh, a trafficking case that's trying to be built against me, said it sounds like it's a go, um, then said something about uh, he'd, like to, uh, he'd like for me to have a gun so that they could just shoot me. Um, then the guy said, I'm sure that your superiors could help cover that up. You used to be able to do that. And he uh, basically said that he'd like to plant a gun on me so that he could shoot me. This was all told to me by somebody else. Um, so, I mean, it's something that I would like uh, looked into. Like, I can probably get you where it was at and you can see the two people. I don't know if it was, if it, you can get a recording or you can hear what they're saying, um, but he's terrified. He doesn't even want, he doesn't, he didn't even, he was thinking like he wasn't even gonna tell me. And he's like, I couldn't do that though, because if you end up dead, I'm gonna feel responsible. Now, have you brought that to the attention of the, uh, the Missouri State Highway Patrol that's investigating this case? Yes, I did. Okay. And uh, then the, so basically they said, unless he'll come forward, it's hearsay. So he can't really do anything with that, is what I was told. Okay, well, as far as investigating that type of thing, for accountability's sake, we're gonna let uh, Missouri State Highway Patrol take care of that because, you know, the standard reasoning is you can't investigate yourself, so we're going to let that outside agency take care of that. I think that's the best way to do that. Um, but to address your concern uh, about the safety bulletin, the reason that the safety bulletin was put out was because of this. This is, and this should look familiar to you, to you because this is from your website where you say, you indicate that you're advocating people to start shooting police officers. These are your own words here. This was, I'm a part of this, but there's no evidence that this are my words. Yes, I'm a part of this group. Yes, I'm a part of bringing police accountability. Mm -hmm. Yes, I am. And here I'm going to show everybody what they're saying. Let's see. Right here. So, uh, and I'll read it. When so, we start so shooting bad cops for killing our brothers and sisters, who will be the bad guys? Because it, it, it's a true question. Who is the bad guys if the cops are doing these things? And if a cop is going out there and talking to other people about planting a gun on someone and shooting them and killing them, who's the bad guy? I mean, I'm asking for a police accountability. I'm not asking for um, me to not be held accountable. I'm not asking for any of well, that. Well, there's always going to be police accountability. But my question at this but point there hasn't been. Are you issue. in charge of this no cap media? website i'm not in charge of it so you're just i'm a part it. of it part, okay so you didn't type this in this question about shooting police officers i don't remember if i did or not so you're saying it could have been you that, that typed this in i don't remember if it was me or not what about this other one where you talk about shooting these officers who is did you do, post that one as well or do you not mm -hmm. remember that because i believe that's from the same uh, facebook site our lives and our brothers and sisters lives you see when you don't hold them accountable and you disable our ability by not making them follow sunshine or foia request laws we don't have many other options i don't i don't remember typing that so i can't answer if i did or if i didn't but i mean it, it's, it's possible that it was you that it was me? That it's possible that it was? Yeah, I mean, is that what you're saying? You say you can't remember if you did it or not, so you're saying it's possible that you typed that? Um, I, I can't recall. I don't know. Okay, that's good enough. That's good. That's fine. Um, so here's where we are with this. When somebody, whether it's you or a member of your, your Facebook group, when somebody puts this type of thing out publicly, advocating shooting police officers, how do you think that makes us as police officers feel? Um... Hopefully, like you should um, watch your brothers and sisters and you should hold them accountable for their actions. 
Hopefully. Well, Hopefully, that's, that's what we do it would time, get but... you guys to put the bracelets on your brother, on the, the boys in blue that are violating the well, law. Somebody Hopefully. gets on a website and says, I'm advocating shooting. That's cops. not what it says. When we start shooting bad cops for killing bad our brothers cops. and sisters. Bad cops. Bad cops. But it still says shooting cops. Bad cops. Yeah. That are acting outside of the law. Well, that are using the color of law. Thing. That are using the color of law to protect themselves from being held accountable. That's what it says. Okay. Well, that's subjective. That's you know people can interpret that any way they want to. We interpret it as whoever it was that wrote this saying that advocating. How long ago something. was that? When was that actually posted? Uh, August fourteenth. August fourteenth. That one was posted. Yeah. Okay. So, and then when was this one from? I don't see a date on this one. Do we have a date for that one? Um, but this is, apparently this one here is in response to not getting um, information that had been requested through the FOIA. Yes, the Sunshine Law, FOIA, mm -hmm. all those things, which I've requested quite a bit of information, and I've been, I've been given next to nothing from Joplin Police Department. Any information that's requested that, that meets FOIA uh, standards, we're going to release it. Any that meets Sunshine uh, request standards, we're going to release it. But if it doesn't live, uh, meet those standards, then we're not going to release it. The bulletin that you're talking about, the safety bulletin that was put out in response to this email that's advocating shooting police officers, was a was an intelligence, an internal intelligence bulletin that, and this letter was sent to you, and it states that uh, intelligence bulletins are exempt from that. Uh, it was actually put out in two different bulletins. So one was an intelligence bulletin, and the other was not an intelligence bulletin. I don't, That's true. I haven't heard anything about that. Well, how, why would you say that the other was not an intelligence right. bulletin? Because I've seen them both. Well, if you've seen them both, why, why are you saying you want them if you've seen them? Because I want to show the public. I want to show the people. I want to show the world. I want to take corruption down. I want, I want it gone. So do I, I don't want... I want the corruption gone. So do I. That's it. I, there, should, there should never be police corruption. And I 100% agree. Not police corruption as long as I'm around. And I agree. And I and I believe you. Yeah, I, think I came and talked. Yeah. I talked to yeah. you when we were up there, and I asked you. Yep. A I government agree. for the people, by the people, and of the people would be accountable to the people. And, and we, we both and believe we are that. Accountable to the people, um, because the police carry a lot of power, a lot of responsibility. So we do need to be accountable to the people, and we're always going to be accountable to the people, but we cannot tolerate people making threats against us. It'd be like, what if somebody said that they wanted to do something bad to you? I, that's what I called about yesterday, and you know what I was told by a member of your staff? A police officer wouldn't do that. I was told that yesterday. What, when, what? when I called in and I talked about uh, Captain Duncan talking to a person and directly trying to find a way to violate my rights, and then went on to say uh, how he would like to plant a gun on me and shoot me. That is, that is egregious. This came from an officer's mouth. Well, now, if he's thinking that... Well, let the Missouri State Highway Patrol investigate that, and if they find something, then we'll, we'll do whatever is appropriate with that. But you guys can take action, too. Well, you guys have internal affairs that can. Everybody gets due process. Everybody yes. gets their fair shake to be. Yes, they do. Uh, because an accusation is just that. It's an accusation. Everybody has the right to due process to, to be found to be innocent until proven guilty. And with what you're saying now, it's just an accusation against Captain Duncan, and he's innocent until he's proven guilty, as every American citizen is. Yes. Uh, so we'll let Missouri State Highway Patrol look into that. If there's something to it, we'll deal with it appropriately. I, I can assure you that. Um, so that's on that side of the coin. On the flip side of the coin, it's my understanding you're uh, upset because that safety bulletin wasn't released to you. It's an intelligence bulletin that is not covered by the Sunshine Laws or the FOIA laws or anything like that. And internally as a police department, we need to be able to have safety bulletins. If somebody would just take your name out of it, if somebody is out there saying, hey, let's go shoot police officers, or I think for whatever reason we should be shooting police officers, can you see how that would, you know, put us in a position where we would say, hey, who is this person? Why are they saying this? If we encounter this person, we need to be on a heightened sense of uh, safety and security. Um, I mean, I can understand be on a heightened sense of safety and security. The, uh, the part I don't understand is picking apart my poetry and grabbing it, the parts that you want to, to build the context that you want to build, which was done in that bulletin. 
There's parts of it that was taken from poetry well, that you guys will took. Will cops for killing our brothers and sisters who will be the bad guys? That is not poetry. That, that, that's not poetry. That may it's not be threat. poetry. That's not a threat. That is not a threat. You, you don't see how that can be taken as a threat. I, you, you can take it however, like you said, you can see things however you want to see them. True, true. Like, it, it's, a, it's a question is what it is. It, it, that's all it is, is a question. So, and it's an honest question because you look at, like, the I have a Derek Chauvin thing. If somebody would have walked up and shot Derek Chauvin for kneeling on that guy. You're talking about Eric Chauvin, the, the officer involved with George Floyd? Yes. Yeah. If somebody would have walked up and shot him and saved George Floyd's life, they would be in prison right now. They would get due process. But they would probably be in prison. Well, that's subjective. Because that's, a, yeah, well, I mean, that's true. It is subjective. But at the same time, the other officers, they probably wouldn't be in prison. They'd probably be dead. Because the other officers would have shot that person. That's the, that's the issue we face in America, is the lack of accountability when we see the character of a person and then we don't hold them accountable for well, it. Who in Joplin Police are you saying is doing this kind of thing? We can, uh, we, can, we can talk about some, you know. I've got videos that are out there that you guys have already seen, and you know who's doing it. Officer seen. Wickman, he's one of them. Officer Wickman was on a phone with some friends of mine um, after he arrested a guy for a DUI. I've asked for that video as well. So he arrests this guy for a DUI and gets on a FaceTime with this other person and talks to them, and they say, um, "What?" She she said. Uh, why didn't you give name and badge number when Barry requested it? Uh, and then why did you arrest him? And his response was, I don't give a fuck. That was his response on a FaceTime with a person. Now, is that the type of officer you want on the streets? One that don't give a fuck okay. about policy or law okay. or any of that? Before I got here, so I'll, it did. I've written down the officer's name. I'll look into it. Yeah, I'll and then there's, there's video out there. When I went to... Uh, help some young kids out. That, and, and Joplin Police Department loves to tow vehicles. They love towing them. They just did it this weekend to some kids that, and gave them a CNI in a private parking lot for flashing their lights. They weren't even moving. They were sitting still. The video is out there. Everyone can see it. I put it on my page even. Like, how do you get a CNI sitting still in a private parking lot? Well, that's something I can look into as well. And when I say look into it, I'm not blowing y'all yeah. When I say look into it, I mean I'm going to look into it. I want to check it out. Um, I don't know the officer that arrested me the night with because Wickman's name is the only one that was put on there. Is that when you approached them when they were conducting a stop? I did not approach them. You didn't? No, I was across the street and I asked for name and badge number several times. I told them they don't have to tow those vehicles because other people can show insurance so that other people could save these kids some money and drive their vehicles home. Like they were saying they didn't have insurance. Now all but or there's three kids that were charged. Two of them, the charges got dropped right away because they had insurance. And they told the officers they had insurance, but the officers wouldn't listen. But do you think it's appropriate to interject yourself into scenes like that? I mean, if you, wanna, if you think something's going on that's wrong, uh, like you say those kids got their cars towed inappropriately, why, why not get the kids after the fact once the police have done or finished doing what they gotta do and say, hey, I think you should go this route with this? I have. But I also think it's important to put it out there for everyone to see, for people to know, because the only way to stop tyranny is to use our First Amendment. That's it. That's the only defense we have as people against a tyrannical government is our First Amendment. I agree. But what does the First Amendment have to do with you interjecting yourself into an ongoing, an active scene that the police are involved in? The, the scene was pretty much over when I came back over. I went over to pick up my son who was in a vehicle that was getting towed. So I went over there and I'm recording because it was, it, I mean, it's egregious to me. Like, why are you doing this? My son could have showed them insurance and he could have drove and none of them were drinking. But then they go out and they tell the public these kids were drinking. They weren't drinking. They were just making things up to justify what they were doing. This is what Joplin Police Department has done over and over and over. They justify after the fact. Just like the night that they arrested me, what they did is I said, I want your name and badge number. It's policy in Joplin to give name and badge number when requested, is it not? When you, take an, when you pull a car over, 
you give them your, your, you can give them your name and identification, that's correct. But when you come and insert yourself into the situation and they're trying to conduct business, you're interfering with police business at that point. That's not true. That's not true because the, the Supreme the Court has already, the Supreme portal, Court has already right decided that I can, I can talk. I, I was not in the way. I was backing up. I didn't obstruct anything. And as soon as they wouldn't give me their identification, as soon as they would refused, I went over to the back of the vehicle to get the plates because I know we can get the plate. We can find out who had that vehicle by getting the plates and checking it back to where to the uh, checkout. Right? You you can. It is you in can, your policy. Court can court can flesh that out. The, it is in your policy because That's I looked it up and I posted it. Your policy says when asked by the public, officers will respond with name and badge number. It's in your policy. So don't try to deny that now. I'm That's, not denying that at all. You just did. Uh, what I'm saying did is Did he not just try our, to deny that? He approached our officers and, and interfered in their business. I was across the street. I was all the way across the street when I asked for name and badge number. Okay. All the way across the street. Other kids were yelling, saying things. They were calling them names. I said, don't, you don't do that. I was the one telling them, don't do that. They're doing what they're taught. This is because of the leadership they've had before. That's why they act like this. We have to educate them out of it. That's why who acts like that? The police officers. That's why police officers act like that is because their leadership doesn't lead by example. Well, if I'm we lead by now, it, so yes, you are, and that's why I'm here talking to you. And I, and I appreciate you coming in, and, but this is the proper way to do things. If you have um, a complaint or a concern, come in and talk to us so we can get it hashed out. Whoever, whether it was you or somebody else that put this, this stuff on the website, the no-cap website about harming police officers, that's not the right way to do it. Okay. That's not the right way to do it. Okay, and I can, I can agree to that. Okay. I can agree to that, okay. and I can say... You know, if those are still up, that I'll go back and look, and I will pull them down personally. I appreciate that. That's I will I do, do that because that. I do I do believe that. I mean, my my stepbrother was a police officer for 25 years in Wichita, Kansas. Um, I like to believe he was a good officer. He was on SWAT. He made it to detective. I mean, he. I, I, I mean, I hope he did a good job. I hope he wasn't hurting people. Well, if, um, you, ask, if you let him see that post and you ask him what he thinks about it, I'll be interested to see what he says to you. Oh, I'm sure he. I'm sure he's seen it. I mean, he's he's gone on some things that I've posted, and um, uh, we don't talk a whole lot. Mm. But he's uh, he's he's expressed his uh, his his thoughts to me, and when when it's when he thinks it's out of line, he's 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 shown me. Okay. He's let me know. So I mean, I would. I I'll talk to him. I'll see what he thinks. I mean, I know why he left the force, and I know why I've been told he left the force because he didn't feel he could trust the people that had his six because he that did because and that that is unfortunate because you've been there before i mean i've read up on you yeah, i'm not an ignorant much. person I, I you have been there before and you've been on a force where things aren't or things are tyrannical where yeah, they you, where they yeah. wouldn't they weren't accountable to the people and you tried to make them accountable to the people. So and when you looked into my background and you've seen that I tried to help people who needed help and the problems I had with that. So you can see that me being here, things are going to be done the right way. And I'm not saying that they haven't been done the right way, but that should settle some things in your mind if you know a little bit about my That's background. why I'm sitting right here. Yeah. So let me answer this, Mr. Winfield. In a nutshell, what is it that you want to have happen at this point? Um, I just want to see accountability from here on out. I want to see... Um, the people that uh, are wearing the badges, the people in uniform, uh, act like people that we should follow. That's what I want to see. I want to see leadership. I think we're all in agreement. Yeah. I, mean, I don't. I don't see any difference of opinion here. I don't see whether it should be. A but when your assistant chief sits over there and tries to make up a scenario that isn't even real, and it, just right now, that doesn't show me the accountability that I'm looking for. Now you have. You're talking straight to me, mm -hmm. and you're taking all the subjective things out of it. But that when I say something subjective, you corrected me. Now, when he was saying something subjective, there was no correction there. So the way that he says, "Well, if if our officers pull you over and they come to your vehicle, then they had, they should give whatever." No, that is not what the policy says at all. The policy does not say that. You could go pull it up, can't you? Sure. So that we could bring it in here and well, we could think, show the people what it actually you know, says. The problem is. When an officer's out on the scene doing whatever work it is that they're doing, 
when they have outside people coming into that scene and saying, hey, I want, then, then distracting them. When you start getting distracted, things go off the rails. That's they can. Problem. They That's can, yes. Now, but when your officers... Normal, if you had approached them and said, hey, I have a concern, can I, can I have your name and badge number? That would have been a different story. But if while they're in the process of working a scene, whatever the scene may be, if you come into it... The, scene was, the scene was over. They were just standing there talking to the kid as the uh, tow trucks pulled up to tow their vehicles away. The scene was over. The kids were over there talking and saying things to them across the street. The, the scene was pretty much over. So that, that's what I did. Do you remember the date that, of that incident? I mean, I was arrested. You guys can pull that up, can't yeah, you? Yeah, can find that date. Okay. Well, I'll look into yeah. that one as well. I mean, the accountability has got to be on both sides. We can't just have uh, you guys pointing the finger at me and writing bulletins and doing all these different things to, uh, to try and make me the bad guy when your guys are out there really violating the law, violating the Constitution, not holding themselves accountable. Well, that's, that's not going to happen. Um, I can't say that it has happened because I just got here. I've only been here a couple of weeks. Um, but it's not going to happen while I'm here. And I don't think any of these guys would tolerate it happening either. But I know you have issues with things that have happened in the past, but I'm telling you from this I've, uh, I've had maybe a couple of experiences with, uh, is it Captain Wolf? Yes, sir. And you know what? I can say Captain Wolf has been professional in, in the experiences that I've had with him. Uh, I've, he's answered my questions. He's mm -hmm. done those things. I, I haven't had, I, I, and I can say that, I haven't had an issue with Captain Wolf. Um, now, Assistant Chief Lewis, um, it, it's, it's a different story. I have, I've seen him try to lie, try to hide things, not be accountable to things, um, uh, to try and uh, mislead or, um, and, and I don't believe that's a, accountable. I don't believe that that's a, a, a great leadership value, well, integrity. Uh, instances are, but, um it doesn't sound like there should be a fight here because you're saying you want police accountability. We're saying we want police accountability. You're saying you want things done the right way. We're saying we want things done the right way. But what we're, what we're also saying that I think you might have some disagreement with, or, or maybe you don't, is when we see stuff like this that advocates harming police officers, that dog ain't never going to hunt. You know, it's, it's just not. And it's, um, that's why, and I think it's 100% totally appropriate to say, hey, this guy has just said that he advocates and is encouraging people on his website to harm police officers. Here's who he is. This is his picture. Um, so if you see him, just be aware of that. Don't go after him. Don't mess with him. But if you see him, just be aware that this, these are the things he's saying. There's absolutely nothing wrong with uh, that being put out to police officers. Quick question, though. Yes. How many times do you think I came in here and I tried to talk to them before any of that was put out? Well, there's another any, any there. of the people the put training, anything out. The training center was the, the time in question where you uh, that's where that's, that's where Captain uh, and that's Duncan assaulted me. And do you know who requested the highway patrol to investigate that? I did. No, I did. I well, sent the request letter for that because it is about we want to we want to make sure that we're accountable to the public. And with your complaint, I thought it was the best action to contact another agency, which is when Captain Wolf contacted me that day, I wasn't at the station. I was the one that made that decision to farm that out to the Highway Patrol. Because it, would it be credible in your view if you file a complaint against one of our officers, one of our command, you know, top command officers, and then we investigate that ourselves? Would that be credible? No, but why That's is he attention. still on staff? Why isn't he removed from duty? Awesome. You've seen, awesome. you seen the video, and you probably pulled the video from up there. I did nothing outside of my constitutional rights. I was in public areas. I even told them they could go back because I had no ill will towards anyone. Was I was, yes. Mm -hmm. I was just filming There's in public areas, mm -hmm. and they came out, followed me around. He came at me, grabbed my arm well, in a provocative a way. We have the right to say, hey, training is going on. This is a closed facility. We need you to exit the building. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, you were asked several times to leave. Before it's, it wasn't a closed facility. They had doors on the room where the training was going on where they could close the doors. I even spoke to the person that said, well, our AC isn't working that well. And I said, well, tell me about it. Tell the people what so we can get you. 
It hasn't gone to court yet. So that is I went. Going that's court still going to court. Okay. Um, well, well, that, well, that what, court case handle it. it whatever they say. That one's not going it. to court though, because I didn't. Uh, you're talking I didn't about get, the arrest in August. That's going to court. Yeah, the arrest in August is going to court. Gotcha. Because they gave me, uh, oh, what is it? Um, a person, a person in roadway, um, obstruction, and failure to identify. Or something along well, those lines. Right? No, that's in. That was by that was Joplin. Joplin police. Okay. That's yeah. what they gave me. A whole bunch of BS charges that they came up with after the fact. That you can clearly see. I'm backing up. I'm staying out of their way. I was using my First Amendment right to use my voice to try and help other people. I mean, I did nothing against the law, and they had to make things up because they got emotional. They didn't like what I was saying and they didn't like the accountability. So they let their emotions take over and they came at me the same way Officer Duncan did. So this is a leadership issue. This is something that is infected throughout the leadership of Joplin Police Department. They think they can go hands-on with anyone, anybody at any time because they've been allowed to, because they can just make up charges out of the blue. And you know what? they're probably gonna get those charges to stick in city court. Because I've talked to several attorneys in town here, and they said, the only way you win is by appealing. You have to appeal it. Because in city court, it doesn't matter. It doesn't, they don't, they'll, just, they'll just find you guilty of something so that you can't, uh, you can't, you can't sue them. That's basically it, it comes down to the money. Any of the issues that you just brought up, like I said, I'm the new guy in town, I've just been there a couple of weeks. I'm going to keep my finger on. I'm going to keep an eye out. If something, if this kind of thing is happening, it'll get dealt with. It's going to, if it's happening, it's going to stop. So what about this weekend? Those kids that were in the parking lot, and they got a CNI in a private parking lot when they were parked. Well, we'll let that play out in court. You know, because that's technically that's not your business. That's those kids' business. These are my these are my brothers and sisters. How is it not my business? Well, let your brothers and sisters handle it in court. Okay. And you know, and it'll play out the way it plays out. You can't be the, the white knight in shining armor for everybody in the city. Well, then what are you here to do? I'm here to enforce the law and to run the police department. Okay, but you've got to enforce the law on both the people and the police. You're right. So if the police are going out of their way to try and show something that isn't even true, then that's a police officer that needs to be removed. And when that kind of thing's happen, when that kind of thing happens... I will deal with it. But I'm pointing it out to you right now. I'm telling you, my yeah, brothers and sisters. I'm going to look into it. I'm going to look into it. Yeah, my brothers and sisters are calling me and they're saying, hey, what's going on? Why are they doing this? Too? You are. We're all citizens. Exactly. But, but there's such a riff and there's been such a riff. And I know that you're not the riff. I know you're not because you just came in and that's why I'm sitting here right now. You're not the riff. The riff is from previous leadership. And the riff has happened because of how they built their mindset. And they, they aren't um, being accountable for their mindset and for the way that they're showing people how to act. Because when you are a leader, people follow you. Well, so I'm if you're breaking the law. From this point forward, because, you know, I'm the new guy. Yeah. And that's what I'm going to do. Everybody will be held accountable, including myself. Including myself. I don't hold myself above accountability or, or doing what's right. Uh, I think it starts with me. I've got to do what's right first before I can hold anybody else accountable to doing what's right, and, and that's what's going to happen. And I believe that of myself. So, I, I mean, we, it's amazing how many things you say that I've already said. It's amazing how many things I've posted online and tagged Joplin Police Department on before you came that I heard come straight from your mouth. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I don't think we're that far off. I think, I think we're very similar. Ideologically, I think we are very similar. But in the real world and the physical world, I think we've got some differences. Oh, yeah. Uh, when this kind of thing gets posted, like I couldn't go on Facebook and say, hey, I think we ought to start shooting such and such group. That'd be inappropriate. That's not right. You know? So you agree with it. That? That's not I, right. It, because of your policies. Yeah. Because of the policies. And, and, and if you're saying that you should start shooting a group just because of, uh, uh, I mean, because of their... Uh, ideology or something like that. I agree 100%. But if, but if you're going to say that, 
we have to band together to protect ourselves from these people that are clearly using a gang mentality to protect each other from accountability, then I'm then I'm then I might be on your side because that's that's what's happened here. That thin blue line is a gang. It is a gang in this area, and they will protect each other. That's not exactly where I use when I'm a career police, and I've been in law enforcement my entire adult life, and I've never heard the police categorized or classified as a gang. I've got plenty of evidence to show it. Subjective, I guess people can call us what we like, what they like. Um, when I when I follow a police officer down the road, doesn't have lights on, doesn't have anything on, and he's doing over 115 miles an hour in a 75 zone, and then I follow him through Web City because he's trying to lose me, and I send that to the police force, and they do nothing. That's a cover up. Well, I can't speak to that because if that had happened and you had sent that to me, something would have been done about it. See, and that's, that's what we got to do, and that's why I'm here. That's why I'm in front of you. That's 100% why I'm here. Okay, well, I can make the promise to you, and I think this is where you're trying to go with this. I can make the promise to you, and, and we're being video, and that's fine. Actually, I like it that we're being video. Yes. I can make the promise to you that if that type of thing is going on, it will be found. I'm the new guy in town. If it's going on, I will take care of it. I will take care of it. Thank you. And that's not lip service. I'm telling you, I will take care of it. But I need something from you as well. Okay. What I need from you is for this type of stuff not to happen, where police officers being threatened. Hey, let's go out and and, and shoot and endanger police officers. I said I will remove those personally if they're still there, um, and I will talk to everyone that's a part of No Cap, and I will say, hey, we're not we're not going to post any of that advocation of uh, any kind of violence on, on anyone, Good so enough. that we can be above it. Good enough. That's where I need it. That's what I need. So I think we've got that understanding. You're going to have a, the police department is and has always been accountable and it's going to continue to be accountable. Um, but we can't have private individuals or private groups saying, hey, let's go out and do bad things to the police. That's now, will you hand me that bulletin? That is a. Wouldn't that be that would be accountability? Because right now I can what I can do is I can show how they're building the mindset how they're building a mindset. And, and you've already stated your piece, and we've shown what you stated it mm-hmm. off of. Now give me the bulletin to show to the people so that I can show exactly what they did. See, here's the thing, that that's an intelligence, that's an internal intelligence bulletin. If I start giving those out, then everybody that has ever had an intelligence bulletin will come in and start saying, we want that, and that's not appropriate. It's, it's exempt from sunshine laws, it's, it's exempt from FOIA. See, so that's where the accountability ends. When we aren't transparent and when you have these secret little thingies well, that you can do to build a picture. It said. it said be on the lookout for this guy. If you see him, use caution. That's not all it said. It said more than that. It said, it said quite a bit more than that. It most? took poetry. It took different parts of my poetry and put them into there to build a, an idea of me. It called me a sovereign citizen. And Are you if, a sovereign citizen? I am not a sovereign citizen. Okay. People have asked me that. I'm, what did I say? I'm here to help my brothers and sisters. Okay, that's I, I can't be a sovereign citizen if I'm help. I'm not. If I'm here to help my sub- brothers and sisters, I mean, I've yeah, I've lived a different life than you, and I've made some bad choices in my life, and oh, I've done yeah. some wild things. But you know what? Every single thing that I've done in my life has led me to this point right here, and th- I can only be accountable for what I know and what I can. Uh, the knowledge that I have to turn to wisdom to make the right decisions. That's all any of us can do. But when we deny the character and we deny the things that are tra- that are completely transparent to everyone, such as not presenting this bulletin when you want to build the bulletin off of things that I've put out, and then you want to... Well, exactly. You just answered a lot of your own question. We built that, that safety and security bulletin based off what either you or your group put out. And well, and a lot of it was my—I mean, of my poetry. They put my vehicle on there. They put uh, pictures of me saying I like to wear wigs and stuff like that. I mean, there was there was so much nonsense on there. So now it's became just a joke to everyone. So now I pick pictures and I go buy wigs over at West Seventh Street. But it it was so egregious that anyone that knows me knew it was way out there. They knew it was completely, because the police didn't even want to come talk to me. Where was the phone call? Call me in and say, hey, Barry, what's up? What's going on? Well, How do we address this? I've been this? here two weeks. How many times have we talked in these two weeks? Twice at now. At least twice in yeah. two weeks. Twice um, now. 
So do you think I'm trying to evade you or being? Like, I don't. I don't. And I'm excited yeah. because I do believe there's a lot of change coming. Um, and I, I believe that there's going to be some people that are going to be gone. And I believe you're going to see that. Well, if, if there's anybody that needs to be gone, they will be gone. But if there's not, then there won't be. I mean, I play things right down the middle. Yeah. Okay? I, I, I don't go, you know, 100% I want to protect the police at all costs or 100% I'm going to go with with uh, with what Barry Moonfield says no. at all costs. I mean, I play right down. Whatever's the right thing to do is what I'm going to do. Now, it may piss some people off. Oh, but, it's going to. It know, will. And, and I, this is the message I've been putting out, and I've said it at least 20 times already since I've been here. You may not always like the things you hear me say, but you'll always know you heard the truth. And I'm always willing to sit down and explain myself. I keep putting that message out over and over and over, and that's what I'm doing here. That intelligence bulletin, that's not going to get put out. I mean, that's the bottom line. It's not going to get put out because it's an internal intelligence bulletin. It's a, a confidential document uh, for in, internal uh, operations with the police department. So that's not going to get put out. So we can't make a special circumstance to bring accountability so that the people can see we will be accountable. There I mean, if there's if if you guys put out a bulletin that is incorrect, um, it, it, it and built by ideology from other people, um, because I kind of have a feeling that there was other people involved in it that were sending things over because hey, they they were people seen that security bulletin mm -hmm. okay so our legal department is seeing it mm -hmm. okay so we we run it through our legal department and it passed muster with them so it can't be an illegal document or even an inappropriate document because our legal advisor looked at it and said this is good to go okay i mean that that's fine i'm just saying it, it Yes, it, 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 it makes a loophole for our government. That's what it does. I'm not trying to make a loophole. But it is. That's what it is. I mean, you guys, I've put everything out there. I've told you guys what I was going to do the whole time. I've showed you my hand the whole time, and we've been playing poker, and you guys still are behind the game. Like, somehow you still can't, can't play fair. I've told you guys. I haven't hit anything. I've been honest with you guys. And we're not hiding anything. That's just an internal, except for the bulletin, confidential safety bulletin. And it's not, but there's no safety in it. What it is is a hit. It was a hit on me. No, it gave them the right to, to you, shoot me. It's in response to you saying, "Let's go out and hurt police officers." I, that is not true. I did not say to hurt police officers. I said bad or whoever who okay. posted this well, or going to bad cops, if it was me, that's, bad that's, cops. So to the police I said. Bad or whoever who okay. posted this, well, or going to bad cops, if it was me, that's bad that's, cops. So to the police department, off, I didn't want to make you think that we're not going to talk to you. Everything I made notes on those uh, issues you brought up. I'm going to look into those today and uh, see what needs to be done with those. You're going to needs to be done with those. Is internal internal affairs going to pull uh, Captain Duncan in to speak with him about? Well, he's already um, been investigated based on your complaint by the Missouri State Highway Patrol. Yes. So does he not get due process? Does he does. He, he does, but internal affairs it? doesn't want to do anything with it. Yeah, he. Yeah, that's fine. Well, see, our internal would it be right for our internal affairs to look at that since he's one of ours in in this type of a of a complaint? Isn't it better for an outside agency who's not affiliated with us to come in and look at it and say, hey, you know, we're not your buddies, we're not your pals, we don't work with you guys every day. We're going to look at this objectively. Isn't that the better way to do it? I I don't believe so. I believe true accountability comes from within. And if, you're, if your people look at it and they go, he did exactly what this guy says, and then your people hold your people accountable. So if our people look at it and say, hey, Captain Duncan is good to go, how would then, you feel about that? that hey, you that's their right. That. No, that is their that. right to do. And then I move on to the next step where I would go to the troopers and I would turn it in, which I did. And that's what we've done. We've sent this to the troopers and say, look into this. this general okay. Complaint. So internal affairs felt that Officer Duncan was in the right. Internal, our internal affairs has not looked at it because we turned it over to an outside agency. But that's where I'm saying, if you want to be accountable, start from within. Oh, the exact police opposite. yourself. If you want to be accountable, you don't police yourself. You, you give it to an outside agency, somebody who's impartial, who's not part of our group, somebody who doesn't have any allegiance to our group, to look at it and say, hey, you guys messed up. I, would, I mean, I agree with what you're saying there, but also from within, if you look at it and you go, this doesn't look good, this doesn't look right, 
I don't agree with this, then you hold that person accountable in the situation right there as well. And you say, hey, we're going to pull you out. You, you've got to. But the end result's going to be the same. If Missouri State Highway Patrol looks at this and says, hey, Duncan messed up, he did something wrong, then we're going to take care of it. We're going to um, do whatever is the right thing to do in, in relation to this incident. But then at the same time, this has been going on. I turned this in a while ago, and now he's out talking on the streets with people, still wearing a uniform, still in that leadership role, and telling them he wants to plant a gun on me and shoot me. And that should be investigated. And now they, that's building a mindset in the public to where my safety is it is uh, being questioned. I got people calling me, telling me this stuff because they're worried about my safety from the police and, and the general public. To the highway patrol. But so it's got to be pulled. You, once you see it, if you agree and if you see it and you want to be accountable, accountability starts with yourself. So you have to say, okay, if I'm going to be accountable, you've got to sit out. You can't be out there doing that. You can't be out there telling other people that you want to do things against the law. Based on what? And based on what you say, somebody told you, somebody else said. And and they're so too scared. And they're information. That's third or fourth. Thing. Yeah, this is exactly what the uh, trooper says. It's it's hearsay because the guy is is scared to come forward because he doesn't trust the police. Well, I'll talk to Captain Duncan, and if he made a statement like that, we'll get it taken care of. I don't believe knowing his character, the limited amount that I do, I don't believe he would have done that. But uh, I'll talk to him about it. I'll so if I can today. get you the date and the location that it happened at and show you the two people standing there talking, it, I mean, that would give you... Uh, that give me a place to start. Those yeah, you need something to, to search into, right? And you can get something to say. If talk to me, then I'll talk to him. And if there's uh, some type of valid starting point, then we'll go from there. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. I'm never going to turn a blind eye to anything being done wrong that's being done. I'm never going to turn a blind eye to that. But I can't say, hey, I'm going to do something, discipline this guy based on what this guy says. Somebody told somebody else said they saw. It. Yes. So just, and I, yes, I have completely agree with that. So if you there has to people, be something we'll talk. brought forward. There has to be some actual evidence yeah. on it. Um, and, and that's what I did bring to you guys from the training facility because I was in a public area and I was why, using my constitutional rights. That's why I contact Highway Patrol because that's the appropriate thing to do. When you bring a criminal complaint, when you say, I believe that I there was a crime done here, that's that's why I sent that formal request because that's the right thing to do. Yeah. But Regardless they also the, think of me or how you think yeah. of me, that's the right thing to do. I mean, I, I also feel the right thing to do is to be accountable for um, your people that are in leadership and because um, uh, Sergeant Blair he was also there he didn't he didn't come up on me like that he he I actually I thought he was very professional he gave me his name and badge number you know he said I don't know what you're gonna do with it and I said well isn't it your policy you know I mean because it is it's your policy uh, Captain Duncan wouldn't that's not the leadership you want you want leadership that follows policy. You want leadership that follows the law. You want leadership that does what's right, even when no one's looking. That's what integrity is. You want leadership that has integrity. He's showed a lack of integrity. That is enough for internal affairs to say, hey, we got to set you out. You've got to be held accountable. Well, you found, what you found with the Missouri State Highway Patrol was a criminal complaint, correct? Okay, well, the criminal complaint always takes precedence over any, anything internal. So the criminal complaint, the criminal side of it, would have to get done and complete before we could even start anything internal. It does? Mm hmm there's, So it, There's a law called the Gantt Law. And what, that, what Gantt says is um, if an officer is being investigated internally and compelled to, to give information at the risk, at, at the cost of losing his job, you know, so that's, that's uh, carried. Yeah, uh, Gary, I'm sorry. Um, that officer is in jeopardy of losing their job, so anything they say is going to be under duress. So we can't use that in a criminal complaint. So the criminal complaint always has to go first. Okay. So that's what's happening now. Um, the criminal complaint, the criminal side is being investigated. If the criminal side turns up something, then the internal side will, will start. And if there's something to it, then we'll, we'll dig it up and find it that way. Okay. That's the proper process. I, I appreciate that. I mean... 
I appreciate it. And I know none of this I appreciate you letting me know, know that. But that's why I want to let you know how things have to go from a legal standpoint now. Okay. I appreciate that. Okay, so I'll give you that information. You made the promise to me that this kind of stuff will stop and you're going to take that down? Yes. Okay. I will I will take that down personally and I will make sure that nobody posts anything well, talking about harming much, other I people. Really I really do. Oh. Thank you for that. Yeah, thank you for your time. Well, thank you for coming in and making me aware of these things. And like I said, I'm never going to blow you off. Um, I'm never going to blow anybody off. If there's a concern a citizen has, I want them to come and talk to me. And maybe there's just a lot of times these things are miscommunications. You're thinking one set of things and we're thinking a different set of things. But once we sit down at the same table and everybody puts all their cards on the table, um, everything's cleared up and everybody leaves happy or equally unhappy. Whichever. And when it... And when these things came out, they simply could have called me and sat down and said, hey, what is up? What do you, do you want to shoot cops? And I would have said, no, nobody should shoot cops. They shouldn't shoot cops. Nobody should feel the need. Nobody should feel that they're being harmed in that kind of way by our leadership but to where they- That puts the police or anybody for that matter on a high state of alert when they see something like that. If I saw something from somebody in the community or anybody anywhere that says, hey, we should do bad stuff to Rich Pearson, well, you know, that's gonna put me at a high level of alert. And uh, I wanna do what I think I need to do to protect myself. In this case, it was putting out the safety bulletin to say, hey, this guy has made threats against the police. If you see him, just keep that in mind. That's all that safety bulletin said. Yes, and then when the public has been beaten down and their constitutional rights have been taken away so about, many, many times, you. Well, you are, you're talking about your whole police force here because I didn't threaten anybody specifically on the police force. No. So why can't I talk about the whole general public? Okay. Wouldn't that be fair? I mean, I think that muddies the water quite a bit from the specific thing we're talking about here. But, but it doesn't because if you're violating constitutional rights, that's all of our rights. See, that's not a sovereign citizen well, talking no, there. No, that's no, an American. Here to violate anybody's rights. Yeah, and that's what you're going to do now. And I appreciate that. But when I'm telling you this stuff has happened for so many years that it's built into the mindset of the leadership, of the people, because they've been thinking they can do this. They think that they can demand your ID when they have no reasonable suspicion. They have no probable cause. They have no nothing. They think they can stop you and demand your ID. And they've arrested people for that, for just walking down an alley because they didn't want to give an ID. Well, that's that happened. happened. I can't do anything about, but I can do something about what goes on in the future. And that's, yes. that's why I'm here. And that's why we're both here, because we're going to change the mindset and we're going to change the culture and we're going to build a community. But whatever the right thing is to do is what we're going to do. That's where yeah. the community building comes in. That's where the trust comes in. Accountable police build accountable communities. I believe that. I'll go with that, yeah. That's a... Simple saying that I've liked to say over and over and over, and I've posted I, I it many, many that. times. I don't disagree with that at all. I'm good to go with that. Oh. All right. I appreciate your time. I won't take no more. Okay. Well, we good? Yeah, yeah. I think we're good. As long as we get that stuff taken offline, um, and your complaint that was made with the state police is being investigated, if they try to print it to it, then we'll throw our internal investigation. Okay. Okay? Thank you very much. All right. Thank you for coming in. I think we're good to go. I'll show you. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Captain Wolf. All right. See you. All right. I'm still liking the guy. He's bringing accountability. So it's all coming. It's all coming. Just got to have some faith, right? <laughs> Y'all ain't even trying to give him <laughs> a chance. That's funny. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> People, come on now. He's a, we got to give him the opportunity to, to uh, show us he's different, to show that... Uh, He's, uh, he's going to hold these people accountable. I mean, I don't care if you a gangster, or a mob, or whatever. You got, he's got a job to do. They got a job to do. And when you hide from the truth and you hide from accountability, 
you don't have much integrity at all. So, all right. Peace out, everybody. Hope you had a good day. Hope you uh, hope you enjoyed the live. Uh, 